This morning I'm going to be talking to you, all of us, not just the grads, but all of us, about wisdom. Hmm, that's a good topic, isn't it? Yeah. How many of you, when you were students, or when you were teenagers, thought you knew everything? There's some honest people in here. Okay, okay, good litmus test. I know uh, for some of us it might have been so long ago we can't really remember. I I get it. I'm getting there. But uh, let's go ahead and pray this morning. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to come to you and to hear your word, Lord God. I pray that you would just pour out your anointing upon me, that these words would not be my own but yours. And, Lord God, that you would move in our hearts today and that our hearts would be open to receive from you through the Holy Spirit. And, God, we would accept your guidance and your correction in our life. We just give you all the glory and honor, and in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. How many of you in this room, I know I just asked you how many thought you knew everything, but how many of you in this room have ever made a mistake due to a lack of wisdom? Go ahead, raise your hands. Come on. I'm not talking about due to ignorance. There's a big difference between ignorance and lack of wisdom, okay? Ignorance, my, my mama used to explain it to me like this, and please forgive me, I'm going to use the word stupid a few times today. I'm sorry. I know it may be offensive to some of you. You probably don't read the NIV or the New King James because both of them use it. But uh, that's just just where I'm at. Uh, It's interchangeable with foolish. Okay, we understand that. Or maybe even brutish. But here's the thing. My mom always explained to me what stupid was like this. And I've I've shared this with the youth before. She said, when you're a little kid and you're wandering around the house and everything's so big, right? And then you see that stove, and your mom is cooking something on the stove, and you see that, that coil turn bright red. It's glowing, and it's beautiful, and it's just so enticing. And when you're a little kid, and you're a toddler, and finally you can see up there, and you, you're just like, what is that glowing thing? I have to touch it. And you take your finger, and you, you just go, Psss, ah! Right? Or maybe if you're tall enough or you climbed up on something, you went the whole hand, ah, okay, Ooh, bad news, right? Now that's ignorance. You didn't know. You didn't know it was going to burn your hand. You didn't know it was going to cause that much pain. It just looked pretty, so you touch it. Now say a couple weeks pass by, and your mom's making you a grilled cheese, and you're walking by the stove once again, you got this hand bandaged up, but look, it's so pretty. <laughs> and you take your other hand. Ah! My mom said, that's stupid. I was like, okay, I get it. I get it. Because now you know better. That was foolish. You know better. You shouldn't have done it. You've learned your mistake. Well, at least you should have learned from that mistake. You made the mistake. You should have learned from it. When you don't, that's not using wisdom. That's being foolish. The Bible actually has a lot to say about this subject. If you've ever read through the Proverbs, right? Right? Many, 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 many lines on what foolish is and what wisdom is. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We're not going to look through all of them today. Um, We don't have that amount of time. I encourage you to read through the Proverbs often. That's wisdom. But this morning we're going to talk about a few things that the Bible has to say about wisdom. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1, if you'll turn there. Some of the youth from a long time ago will probably instantly know where this is going. (laughs) Some of the past previous students had actually made this their life verse. <laughs> and that's, that's okay. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. I'll go ahead and take the S word out and put in foolish. Okay? But I'm reading out of the NIV. It says this. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. But whoever hates correction is foolish. Whoever hates correction is foolish. So the person who takes the knowledge and puts it in, into, into their life and they, they exhibit discipline and they take it and they put it in, they're not going to go up and reach that red hot thing anymore. That'll burn me. But the foolish person will say, but it's so pretty. Right? And you might say, well, 
when we're saved and we receive the Holy Spirit who speaks into our life, and when we have God's word that we can read, and by the way, when I hold up my phone, it, it has the Bible on it, okay? So we have the word of God that gives us instruction. All we have to do is follow it. That's so simple, right? It's so easy. We're already told what we need to do. God already gave us instruction. All we have to do is do it. But that's where wisdom comes into play. Wisdom isn't just the knowledge. Wisdom isn't just gaining knowledge of scripture or gaining knowledge of a certain area and study. Wisdom is actually putting those things to use. When we talk about God's word, yeah, you can be filled with God's word and not be a very wise person. Amen? It happens to all of us. All of us. I remember when I first had gotten saved, this was probably two months or so afterwards, and some of you may have heard this. Don't stop me if you have, because not everyone has. But uh, shortly after I got saved, and I did not grow up in a Christian home, I was 19 years old, my friend and I, one of the friends from the church where I received Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, said, hey, we're going to go down to Reno. There's a... Um, I can't even remember what it was called, but it was like, uh, what is that, Hel uh, Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames or something? I don't know. Is that what it's called? Where they, It's like an outreach program that they had. A, they put on a big production and all that kind of thing. I don't know if it was that one in particular, but it was one of those kind of things. So we went down there. We watched it. So we're, you know, we're on a Christian outing, right? Yeah. We're going to go tell people about Jesus. It was rad. And we actually had a really good night. We met some people and shared Christ with others and that kind of thing. And so we get in the car and we're headed back home from Reno, which is about a 45-minute drive uh, from Reno to where we lived in Northern California. And he said, hey, you want to drive? I'm like, sure. Awesome. It's midnight, by the way. And uh, I, I get in the car, and it was an Eagle Talon TSI. Turbo Sport Injected. Yes. Sounds a lot cooler than it was. Actually, it doesn't. An Eagle Talon. But <laughs> regardless, it's a speedy little car, actually. And so I'm driving, and he starts, you know, pushing me a little bit. He's like, oh, it'll go faster than that. It'll go faster than that. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. So I start rolling through the gears, and we are, well, I am passing quite a few people. Um, and as we're making our way up into the lowlands of the Sierra Nevada mountain range, uh, going back into California, uh, we're starting to hit the curves, and he says, hey, just back up. You might want to back off a little. And I'm like, why? And he's like, well, my rear tires are almost bald. And I'm like, no kidding. Right as he said that, guess what happens? I start unintentionally drifting. Um, the rear starts flying out, and so I correct and kind of overcorrect because I have nothing in the back that I wasn't even aware of it. And so I overcorrect again. So we're not going into oncoming traffic, which there was none because it was midnight, no big deal. But uh, we end up going this way, and this way is a big embankment and then a drop off down the side of this uh, lowland part of the mountain range there. And we went up that <laughs> embankment, and we went up into the air, and we went into the air, like for a while, and uh, then we hit, finally, on our rear bumper. We were faced straight up into the sky. It went vroom, whoosh hit this way. Uh, when we hit the rear bumper, the back window shattered out, and everything that was in the car went out of the car, except us, we were strapped in. Okay, so that was one bonus, one small instance of wisdom. And uh, the, the, the car stereo came out of the dash and flew out the back window. So from that point, we started flipping end over end this way. And we finally came to a stop, and actually there was one wheel, one wheel, not tire, one wheel left on the car. Um, the others had busted off from the axles and everything else. And uh, oddly enough, we're sitting there, and I, I look at him, and he looks at me, and he's like, you okay? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you okay? And yeah. We're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the dust is settling, and oddly enough, no kidding, we're sitting there, and we look throughout the car before we decide to climb out the windows. Well, actually, he didn't have to because his door was ripped off. Um, <laughs> but we look down in the center console. I'm not even making this up. was the Bible that we had left there. Everything in the car had gone out. Now, you look at that, and you're like, that's amazing. That's a sign from God. Yeah, I looked at it, and I'm like, ah, he's telling me how stupid I was. 
Because that's what it was. It's only by God's grace and God's mercy that me and Phil didn't die that night. I'm not kidding. I was not being wise. And yet, I had been saved. Yet I was falling after Jesus. Yet I just got done telling people about Jesus. And now here I am, dumb, acting like a fool, driving up a highway well over the speed limit in the middle of the night. I'm like well over. Not using wisdom. The fact is, just being saved doesn't mean you're going to have wisdom or use wisdom. It doesn't make it automatic. It's not something that happens by accident. We even look to the Bible on, on, uh, <laughs> to examples of people who are being used by God and yet still made mistakes because they didn't show wisdom. You look at King David and his lust. What, did that, what kind of trouble did that get him into? You look at Saul and his impatience and his pride. What, did, what kind of trouble did that get him into? You look at Judas and his greed. You look at Ananias and Sapphira and their lies. All these people were following after God, and yet they made mistakes. They had the knowledge, but they didn't have wisdom. Now, thankfully, not, and not in all those stories is that the end of it, but we do have access to grace and mercy. And I'm thankful for the grace that God had on me and Phil that night. Because I could have killed myself and my friend very easily. All because of a lack of wisdom in a silly, silly moment. We need to know where wisdom truly comes from first off. And many of you may have heard this verse before, but go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. That was probably my first major mistake after being saved. I'm sure it's not going to be my last. I make those mistakes all the time. Not those in particular. I haven't been crashing cars everywhere. But we all do make mistakes. Thankfully, God gives us some courage, some encouragement and some instruction. And first we see where wisdom comes from in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Everybody's there, right? Three people. Good. <laughs> the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. It comes from God. Because remember what I said, wisdom isn't something that you're given and automatically you're just wise. Wisdom is something you have to do. Okay. You, now I know we can say that, yeah, he's wise in, in these ways about these things. Why do we say that about a person? Because they act wise in those situations or in those things. Whether it's building an airplane or being a follower of Christ, they have wisdom when they actually put that into place, right? And the wisdom that we need comes from the Lord, and it, comes, it starts with that knowledge and that instruction. The one that the fool despises. He doesn't like to hear that if you touch that, it will burn you. But it's pretty. It starts with the Lord. It starts with the Lord and wisdom is played out in you. It's played out when you actually put what we've learned from God into practice. When we take God's word and then when he says say no to something, we say no to something. When he says go do something, we go do something. When he says stay away from something, we stay away from something. So when we start to play around the edges that we get ourselves into trouble once again. This sounds simple enough, but as we looked at those examples of people that I just told you about in the Bible, and there's so many more, we can see that it's not quite as simple as just receiving what God has for us. We actually have to put it into use. We're just as susceptible as they were. Everyone in this room. We are just as susceptible to temptation. We're just as susceptible to sin as King David was. 
None of us are above it. All of us have to be strong. All of us have to stand on God's word. All of us have to put that instruction into use in our own lives to actually show wisdom. God knows that we are just as susceptible as they were. Look in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. Whoops, I'm sorry. <laughs> for those of you looking for 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15, that doesn't exist. I wrote down the wrong verse. <laughs> the Bible tells us to live as wise. Somewhere in there. Amen? Somewhere in there. Yes. 10, 15? If that's it. I'm going to buy you a Starbucks, whoever said that. Yeah, it probably is Ephesians 5.15. Thank you. Light drop. Who said Ephesians 5.15? Christina Miller, I will be buying you a Starbucks. If I got embarrassed about those things, I probably would be right now. Anyway, <laughs> Ephesians 5.15. Excuse me, and I'm very sorry for that. Ephesians 5.15 says this, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Make sure that all of your notes are correct. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Uh, I put the inside part in there myself. <sighs> Just showing you what wisdom does not look like. Double check. All right. <laughs> Live as wise and not unwise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are, uh, are evil. Now, this is 15 and 16 of Ephesians chapter 5. Thank you, Christina. Here's what I gather from this. God is saying, make the most of every opportunity. That's very simple, right? Very straightforward. That means make the most of every opportunity. Live as wise, not unwise. Why? Because the days are evil. What is that warning that we're receiving right there? The days are evil. That means that there are multiple opportunities throughout everyone's day to make mistakes. Everybody's day. Not just my day, not just your day, everybody's day. We literally have an enemy who is roaming the earth, setting traps for us. All of us, none of us are impervious to this. We can all make mistakes. I literally just made one, and no, that wasn't a really cool idea on giving you an example. But <laughs> I literally wrote down the wrong book. <laughs> Every single one of us, we have to be careful. I'm going to tell you something very important here. Wisdom doesn't happen by accident. You don't just go about your day and like, la, 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 oops, I was wise. <laughs> no, more often than not, it's la, 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 whoops, I messed up. It doesn't happen by accident. We have to be intentional about actually putting those words that God has given us into practice. We have to take that knowledge that he gives us and put it into practice. We have to be intentional about it and say, today I'm going to be wise. Today I'm going to do what the Lord has told me to do. I'm not just going to live my life and hope that I make the right choice. We have to be intentional about it. Because if we are not on our guard, if we're not being intentional about our days, we will make a mistake. We will get tripped up by the enemy. It's going to happen. God is giving us a warning here. It doesn't happen by accident. It happens by us actually applying his words to our lives. Not by accident. One of the things that we get tripped up on most often, especially today and even back then, is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. <laughs> that was a joke. But it is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. <clears throat> At least I hope it is. <laughs> Say amen when you get there. It's the right verse. 
says this, Do not deceive yourselves if any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age. You should become fools so that you may become wise. You should become fools so that you may become wise. This is one of the traps that the, the enemy uses on most of us quite a bit to where we think that we know better. To where we don't rely on God and his wisdom and his knowledge that he imparts to us through his word and the Holy Spirit, but we think, well, we can just handle it. I'm not saying that what you learned when you were in grade school and what you learned when you were in junior high and senior high and in college or technical school or whatever it is that you went to or any type of continuing education that you receive is not good. That's not what I'm saying. And I'm not saying that it's not applicable. That's not what I'm saying either. But what I am saying is no matter how much knowledge you gain in any area, it's nowhere near God's knowledge. And no matter what initials you get before your name, (laughs) your standing is nowhere near God's standing. Your standing in this world is nowhere near what your standing should be in God's kingdom. First and foremost, it's the knowledge from God that brings wisdom. Not of what this world has to say. Not what the world thinks about you or how smart you are. It's what you allow God to actually do in you. It's when you actually put that knowledge into practice that God has given you. That's when you start to demonstrate wisdom. And wisdom is much greater than any degree. By far. Not to downplay it, grads. For those of you guys who are headed into college someday, go to college, get a good education. You need that. But remember, first and foremost, it's not about what the world says is your wisdom or how knowledgeable you are, how smart you are. It's what God has to say about you. The world's wisdom is nuts. I'm sorry, it's nuts. I'm not here to take a political stand and get all angry about it, although I'm quite angry about a few things. (laughs) But seriously, think about it. When I was a kid, no offense, you were either a boy or you were a girl. I'm just saying. And now, I don't know, look at Facebook. They have like 300 things you get to choose from to describe what you are. So, and I'm not, I'm not saying this to jump on that topic or anything like that. That's not what I'm uh, insinuating or anything. I'm just saying, listen, you have God's knowledge that he's passing down to people and trying to give you wisdom in the way that you should live. And then you have the world that says, oh, let's flip everything on its head. Now, I'm not just talking about that issue. I'm talking about anything. The world likes to say, well, I don't like that because it hurts my feelings. I don't like that because that's not inclusive of the way that I do things. I don't like that because uh, whatever reason. That's what the world loves to do, to where nothing is, is, is off limits anymore. Doesn't matter what God's word says. I don't care if God's word says that you shouldn't do that. It, it feels nice. We should be able to do that. God's knowledge and wisdom that he is trying to impart on people is much different from the world's standards. And that's what this verse is talk about right there. It says it doesn't matter about what the world has to say about how wise you are. It matters on what God has to say about how wise you are. And the way that he's going to say that you're wise is if you actually put into practice the things that he's told you through his word, through the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter about your standing here on earth. It doesn't matter about how many degrees you have or don't have. It matters about putting into practice what God has given you. Don't let... I'm I'm going to hold off on that. I'm sorry. (laughs) Oh, I almost started up a whole other sermon. And everybody said amen. (laughs) Hmm... So we're actually going to start to close here, but you say, okay, 
Wisdom comes from God, Pastor Josh. We understand that God's wisdom is greater than anything that the world has to say on wisdom, greater than or any earthly wisdom whatsoever, greater than or any earthly standing whatsoever. Yes, all these things are true, but how do we get it? Well, we read earlier that it comes from the fear of the Lord, but the New Testament gives us some instruction on what we should do if we need some wisdom in our lives. Turn your Bibles to James chapter 1, verse 5. James chapter 1, verse 5 says this, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should go back to school. I took that from Pastor Les. He does that thing. Um, <laughs> I learned it from you. No, that's not what it says. It says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. He goes on to say, you know, ask without doubt, putting your faith completely in God and trusting in him. But that's what we should be doing, by the way. But if we are lacking in wisdom, if you find yourself in a position this morning where you keep falling into the same mistake over and over again, that's what a lack of wisdom looks like. And I've been there. Even speeding on that mountain highway was a lack of wisdom. But if any of us are lacking in wisdom, all we need to do is ask God. And guess what he'll do? He'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. He's given us his word in the first place. It's full of wisdom. You want wisdom? Read the Bible. Amen? He's given us the Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us in all things as long as we allow him to. He's given us all that we've needed to actually have wisdom. And if we still lack wisdom, all we have to do is reach out to him and say, God, please help me with wisdom. And he says, okay, here it is. But it doesn't stop there. Remember, it's not by accident. We have to put it into action ourselves. He gives it to us, so we have all that we need to actually have wisdom in our life, but we have to put it into place. James chapter 3, verse 13. We're closing with this. James 3, 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. Now, there's actually a whole bunch of good stuff there in that whole portion of Scripture talking about two kinds of wisdom and that type of thing, but that's not where we're going this morning. You have to put wisdom into action for it to actually be wisdom. If any of you has wisdom, let them put it into action. Let them show it by their good life and their deeds and humility. Wisdom doesn't happen by accident. God gives you all you need to actually be victorious and to actually live a wise life and actually live in wisdom. And it doesn't require a four-year degree. It doesn't require a, a, a master's degree. It doesn't require an accelerated uh, program in high school. It requires a fear of the Lord and being willing to submit. And God will work through you and you will have wisdom. And people will know you have wisdom by the way that you live your life. So I encourage all of us, to realize that we have all that we need to live as wise. We do. But it's up to us to put it into place. God's not going to make us. And I also want to encourage us this morning that, you know what? <laughs> we mess up. And we have messed up. 
but that doesn't mean that we're stuck there. Because thankfully, even when we make poor, de- poor decisions and poor choices, God's always right there with us, waiting, with his arms wide open, to accept us back, to forgive us, to love on us when we turn to him and seek his face. There may be those of us in this room that have made recent mistakes. <laughs> like yesterday or even this morning. And I'm not talking about losing the writing down the wrong Bible verse, although that is a mistake. You know what I'm talking about. Those things that you did that you knew better. Even though you've been a believer in Christ, a follower in Christ for 10, 15, 20, 50 years, still made a mistake. That lapse in judgment and that lapse in wisdom isn't something that needs to hang over you like a cloud. It's not something that we need to let defeat us. We can be free from it. And we can ask God and seek him for wisdom and he will give us all that we need to actually live out wisdom. It doesn't matter if you're a brand new Christian or you've been a Christian for 50 plus years. God's forgiveness is the same. And he will give us all that we need to be victorious. Just a little encouragement to the graduates. Remember where real wisdom comes from. It comes from seeking him and his kingdom. Everything else is taken care of after that. That's wisdom. Join me in prayer, will you? Lord, this morning we just thank you once again for your word, and we thank you, Lord, that we have been given the instruction that we need in your word. We thank you, Lord, that you've sent the Holy Spirit to dwell within us, to guide us and direct us as we go throughout this life. But God, this morning, we, many of us in this room also come before you and we ask for forgiveness. Because sometimes we've ignored your direction, we've ignored your instruction, and we've been foolish. And for those of you out there this morning, I encourage you, if you need to take care of this, take take this moment, this opportunity to take care of that issue in your life, I encourage you to do so. Maybe even earlier when we were praying during communion, you didn't take this opportunity to make sure that your heart was right with the Lord. I encourage you to do so now. There's no reason to wait. But pray with me, and as we do, I want you to pray in your own words to the Lord to forgive. God, we just ask that you would forgive us of our mistakes. We're not going to blame it on our shortcomings, and we're not going to blame it on something else or what have you, Lord. But God, we take responsibility for our part. God, we take responsibility for the times that we've been foolish. And maybe there's even times right now currently that we have in our lives things that we're being foolish about. And I pray, God, that you would bring wisdom to those situations. That, God, you would grant us the wisdom that we need to stand up and to turn around and to walk away from those things before it gets any worse. God, that we would be wise. We know that wisdom comes from you. So, Lord, we seek you and your face. God, I pray that you would grant us that wisdom. And I pray, God, that you would give us the strength to act on that knowledge and that instruction that, God, we would live as wise by our good lives and our deeds. God, that we would be pleasing to you. God, I pray that you would break the chains of addiction here in this place. I pray, God, that you would break the chains of sin, break the chains of of guilt, 
that God, we would leave this place in freedom and in victory. And God, that we would leave and live as wise. May we always just seek your face and your kingdom first before anything else. Be intentional about living for you that we don't fall into the traps that the enemy has all around us. God, we just give you the glory and honor. And in the name of Jesus, we pray this morning. And everyone said, amen. Amen.